welcome to this module 7 on manufacturing systems uh, technology. A quick recap of the previous uh, module. So, we were talking about homogeneous transformation in case of computer aided designing and the need for the homogeneous transformation. And then we also started uh, exploring that if you have multiple operations done to a single geometric object in space, then how do you actually use homogeneous transformation for that and a concatenation uh, problem where there are various matrices, multiplier matrices to the basic matrix which is the basic coordinate uh, would actually result in the modified coordinate in that particular case. So, we also were discussing an example problem where we will use this concept of concatenation and homogenized uh, transformation to actually do a transfer of a three dimensional uh, object in space and uh, in, in context of that we had mentioned that there is this block here which is uh, which is a, B, C, D, E, F, which uh, actually uh, is at a certain distance from the origin, uh, which is at the center of this orthogonal coordinate system. And we wanted to rotate this block in the clockwise direction about the y axis along the line D, E. Okay? So, the axis actually is along the line D, E and the rotation was actually to be in the clockwise manner uh, by an angle of about 30 degrees and we would like to estimate the new coordinate locations which is actually shown right over here a dash b dash c dash d dash e dash and f dash after performing this 30 degree rotation. So, we had discussed earlier that we have to first translate this because it is not at the origin. So, we have to translate this block back to the origin first. So, d moves to the point o okay, as you can see here in this translation b and then <laughs> followed by that you are basically doing a uh, clockwise rotation of the block once it is at the origin about the point O and then again taking this back in the module D all the way to the new current location okay, uh, where you can ensure that the D dash E dash does not change with respect to D E. So, because that is the axis about which the rotation is taking place. So, how do we do this problem? So, since we know Since we know about how to rotate at the origin, the translation of the point of rotation which is D in this case. to origin is very important. And we know that the location coordinates of D has been given as 3 5 5 okay. and subsequently we can make the distance matrix for changing the position of D as minus 3, minus 5, minus 5 transpose. Okay. So, that is what the distance. So, the we have to really uh, now take care of what is the order of this matrix, the D matrix, which is somehow should incorporate minus 3, minus 5 and minus 5 in a manner, so that the whole coordinates uh, of all the points A to E in the, uh, in, the, in the initial object should be mapped in a manner so that D becomes 0, 0, 0. Okay. So, let us look at the, <coughs> the basic uh, matrix for housing all the coordinates which we are considering to be the initial vector over which the transformation has to happen. So, that vector can be represented as a uh, an assembly of all the different points A, B, C, D, E and F which is there in the, uh, the, the whole three dimensional figure. And if we look at their coordinates, uh, the coordinates are all uh, you know starting from let us say point A which is 3 5 3. So, we write uh, the matrix or we constitute the initial matrix in a way 3 5 3 and we add a uh, extra dummy variable 1 here for the homogenization sake. So, that we can actually create the addition as a multiplier of, of matrices and this procedure had been detailed in the earlier modules. 
the B can be looked at 7, 5, 3, 1. Similarly, C can be looked at 7, 5, 5, 1. D is again 3, 5, 5, 1 and E subsequently is 3, 6, 5, 1 and F is 3, 6, 3, 1. Okay. So, this is how the initial matrix goes and we have to do this transformation in a manner, so that this column right here, okay, which is the column D becomes 0, 0, 0 and 1, then that is the essence that the whole figure moves back to the origin. So, we create a translation matrix T 1 here out of these in a manner, so that the multiplication of this with the basic initial matrix would result in a situation where the D column becomes all zeros. Okay. So, that T 1 can be constituted as 1, 0, 0, minus 3, 0, 1, 0, minus 5, 0, 0, 1, minus 5, 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay. In a manner, so that after moving back to the origin, the V final at origin would be equal to T 1 matrix multiplied by the V initial matrix. And that would definitely mean that performing this particular transformation would result in a situation where this D column right here goes to 0, 0, 0, 1. Let us look at it. So, if we just multiply the two matrices just formulated here 1, 0, 0, minus 3, 0, 1, 0, minus 5, 0, 0, 1, minus 5, 0, 0, 0, 1 with the matrix which is V initial which is this 3, 5, 3, 1, 7, 5, 3, 1, 7, 5, 5, 1, 3, 5, 5, 1, 3, 6, 5, 1, 3, 6, 3, 1, so on so forth. We will definitely get a situation where if we just evaluate this particular uh, column, what would be the state of this column? So, the first element of this would be recorded as 3 minus 3, the second element as 5 minus 5, the third element as again 5 minus 5 and the fourth element uh, would be recorded as 1. Okay. So, definitely the whole row gets converted or whole column gets converted into 0, 0, 0 n, which is what we need uh, of moving back D to origin. Okay. So, this is definitely a valid transformation which has happened and that way you can actually look at the first multiplier matrix as T 1. The in a similar manner, we can perform uh, another uh, uh, operation to the same, uh, because we have a rotation along the y axis of 30 degree clockwise. Obviously, all the <laughs> clockwise entities in rotations are treated as negative angles. So, from earlier knowledge, the rotation matrix that can be used here R 1 is given by cos of minus 30, 0, sin of minus 30, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. Similarly, minus sin of minus 30, 0, cos of minus 30, 0 and 0, 0, 0, 1. So, this is how the R 1 matrix would look like and the T 2. Now, once you have performed the rotation, the question of translating back the rotated object to the initial position, so that the D dash matches with the D would have to be performed. <coughs> and so, the next matrix that you have to really do in order to retranslate the rotated object back would be 1, 0, 0, 3, 0, 1, 0, 5, again the positive distance matrix 0, 0, 1, 5 and 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay. So, if you now compute the final position of rotated object, it will really be a concatenation between the different matrices that has been looked at here with respect to the V initial, which you started with at the beginning of the process.
So, I will just write down for the sake of brevity what is going to be the final matrix and how it is going to look like. So, the V final if you do all these different <laughs> multiplications of the first translation, the first rotation and then the second translation matrix with respect to the V initial, the V final would work out to be something like 3 plus 2 sin 30, 3 plus 4 cos 30 plus twice sin 30, 3 plus 4 cos of 30, 3, 3, 3 plus twice sin of 30, that is what the first element would look like. The second element would look like 5, 5, 5, 5, 6 and 6. The third element again would be 5 minus twice cos 30, 5 minus twice cos 30. plus 4 sin of 30, 5 plus 4 sin 30, 5, 5, 5 minus twice cos 30, so on so forth. And the, the last element finally, would look like 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 and 1, all 1's. So, the dummy element comes out of this whole transformation. So, simplifying further, we have the new positions of the rotated three dimensional figure as v final equals 4.00 5.00 .00 3.27, 1.00 and you have the other lot of coordinates emerging from the computations shown earlier, which would give you the final locations of the rotated objects point. The fourth uh, point becomes 3, 5, 5, 1. Now, this also gives us a clarity of our transformation method, because you can see that the point d is not really changing from the initial and the final. So, it still remains as the same coordinate 3, 5, 5, 1 and so is true with the next <coughs> coordinate of e, which again is because it is the whole d axis along which the rotation is taking place, the e dash and e and the d dash and d, they are all same in the figure. And the final coordinate is of f is 4, 6, 3.27. Also, what is interesting here is that the dummy variable 1 comes out at the end of the matrix as is and this is the same as what we assumed initially. So, these in fact, the first three rows of this matrix represent the final transformated coordinates of the, uh, the point you know A, B, C, D, E as a, you know equivalent to a rotation being performed uh, at that particular place. Okay. So, it is really very complex the kind of back end computations that are needed for justifying uh, the relocation of an object is really uh, a, a complex set of con concatenated matrices, which would actually transform the initial coordinates into the final coordinates. So, uh, with this I would like to close uh, this module. And in the next module, we would like to look at some different aspects of CAD like curve fits etcetera, particularly when the topology to be mapped is very complex. What do you do in those cases? We will have to evaluate them in a proper manner. Thank you.